Okay, this one, uh, lecture sheet uh, five. So far, uh, we talked about the uh, fluid property, right? Then we start with some law, little law of viscosity, then uh, cohesion, then adhesion property of the fluid, then internal non material fluid we learn. Then we start uh, with some derivation that how much will be pressure at a certain depth of the fluid. Then we derive how we can measure the pressure by analytically by formula P equal to S rho Z, right? Then we learn how we can measure the pressure in a certain container. What pressure difference between two container or pressure difference between two points of the pipe by using pressure gauge and also by using manometer. So in manometer, how it is worked actually by the pressure difference by a vertical column of fluid. And we already derived uh, the pressure balance equation to figure out the deflection of the manometer. And from that manometer deflection, we figure out the difference in pressure. And we solve some problem. Then we talk about the hydrostatic pressure in a mechanical structure that submerges in water or any other fluid. Then we also talk how the uh, a body stabilizes when it is submerged in the water, like a boat or ship. Also, we figure out when a body will be sink and will be float in the water. All those things we talk about the static fluid. That means fluid is not moving. But this chapter will talk about uh, fluid kinematics. So kinematics may include some force and some, uh, not some, I will say velocity of the uh, fluid or motion of the fluid. So it's no more static, right? But here we will apply, also apply the uh, your law of indirect mechanics. For example, uh, F equal to M. Applied force externally on the fluid will be equal to the mass into acceleration with the second law. Okay. So uh, to learn the new chapter about uh, fluid kinematics or about to know the motion of the fluid, we need to know some terms, some criteria, okay? Uh, to get the, not in depth, but fundamental idea about the fluid kinematics. So let's see how to have, what is the fluid kinematics? It's saying the fluid kinematics is the study of how fluid, flow and how to describe fluid motion without considering force and moment. That means right over here, we will not describe, we will not talk about the force and moment working in the fluid. It's a without considering force and moment, how we can describe the fluid flow and motion of the fluid. For example, uh, you like to figure out that there is a waterfall from the high hill, water is falling down, then water flowing through a canal or river. So how those water will flow? Uh, for example, a fluid particle fall down from the fall right over here. It might be flow directly straight line, or heat might flow coming uh, right over here, right over here, might come in a zigzag way, okay? 
So all those things you know, we'll study in the in this chapter. So what is the assumption that we will not consider the person moment? Okay. So <clears throat> there is a two term used in the to describe the uh, fluid in motion. Number one thing that uh, one is kinetics, other one is kinematics. So kinematics, we already say that we will not consider the force and motion of the fluid without considering. So what is then kinematics? It's saying it involves position of a fluid particle and velocity and acceleration, but not the force. Fluid kinematics, it describes the uh, position, velocity, and acceleration, but we will not talk about the force. Fluid kinematics describes how a fluid particle translate, distort, rotate, and how to uh, visualize in a flow field. Flow field means in a flow. Now, here two terms is used it's a translate, distort, rotate. So, for example, a fluid particle, if you think, if I think a fluid particle is rectangular and say coming, this is my south side and this is north. So, he is coming from the north to south through a river. So fluid particle might be any type, right? So I am saying this is a small cube, rectangular. If I only think 2D, then it will be like that, right? That full rectangle or square. So he's uh, flowing in the river. On the way, uh, he might become after a few seconds, is coming right over here, then coming right over here. So gradually, is it? So this motion, you see, this full particle is called translation. It just move from one point to other point without making any rotation. Uh, rotation means rotation around CG of the fluid particle. It's a, this full particle came in right over there. I just made it a bit bigger, came in right over here. Then after a few seconds, he came in over here. When he came in over here, then what does that mean? That means still it is a cube, but when it's coming over here, then it's rotated his, about his center of gravity. That means it is rotation. And what is distortion? So the particle came in over here, then his length is sense. So size is sense. Size get bigger. So that is called distortion or distort. Okay. And we will check it that when a fluid, there will be rotation in the fluid, and when there will be only translation. And when you travel in a river, especially in rainy season, you might see in some location of the river, the water is just rotating. Okay, so we'll figure out uh, under hot condition, a fluid particle might be a uh, will rotate and how we can figure out mathematically, okay? Then we'll uh, see over here. Now, uh, kinetics, what is the kinetics over here? It says the science which deal with the action of forces in producing or changing motion of the fluid is known as hydrokinetics or simply kinetics. 
the study of fluid in motion involves consideration of both kinetics and kinematics. So if you like to study the fluid motion, you need to apply both things. Right, you see the uh, fluid kinetics and how uh, fluid particle is translating uh, or rotating, or it has a linear strain or shear strain. Okay, so if you look in the first figure a rectangular fluid element. And he just uh, travel from one point to other point without any deformation. Actually, this is looking, we are 2D view. Actually, this fluid element will be like that, okay? So after he came in over here, still his size and shape is not changing, but his position is changing from one point to another point. So this type of movement of fluid, fluid particle is called translation. Now, what is the rotation? My original fluid element is a square. Say it was right over here. So when he came in over here, then he make a a rotation that means his position is coming like from here like this one what does it mean his shape still remains the same but he make a rotation rotate a little bit that is called rotation now in the bottom is called uh, linear strain. What is the linear strain? A fluid element is right over here. At a certain time, say uh, after a few moments or three seconds or millisecond, is coming from that point to this point. So what happened over here? That means his shape is sent dimension is 10 so that is called he remained it was a square element but q but when he travel from let's say this is point point a he travel from point a to point b then his shape is sent. His shape is coming like this. So what does it mean? Actual rectangular shape is still there, but one dimension is changing. Uh, so that is called linear strain. Okay. Other one, shear strain. So what is the shear strain? That been fluid particle remain right over here at point A. After few moment, same fluid particle is came in point B. When it's came in point B, then his shape is sense. That means it's coming. So what does it mean? I will explain just one second. Like this. So what does it mean? That is called shear strain. What is the shear strain? Angular deformation. 
because this side was straight, but his angular deformation changing this much. Similarly, this is was right over here horizontal, but is move anti clockwise direction, and this one move clockwise direction. So it happened like this. Okay. So by using these four criteria, uh, we can figure out the when a fluid will be uh, there will be in rotation, uh, when a fluid will fluid flow will be smooth. Smooth means, uh, for example, uh, fluid element does not change in that much direction or shape. Say a fluid element right over here is passing straight right over here and passing one after another. But that is called a laminar flow also. But sometimes you see, say, is something floating in the river. Then this floating small thing, after a certain time, it came in over here, then passing over here. Then next moment, hitting this fluid element. Then this one flowing along this direction is coming along this direction, again hitting this one. So this type of flow is called uh, turbulent flow. For example, you have something is burning, okay, and make it smoke like coil. From the coil, mosquito coil, you see some portion, the smoke coming out is flowing smoothly. Uh, but after certain distance, you see the smoke is getting mixed together and flowing in half of that way. So this portion is called laminar flow, and this portion is called tabular flow. But we'll explain it later on more better that how the flow become turbulent and when the flow become laminar. Okay. They say because fluid are in constant motion, motion and deformation are described in terms of rate. Now, this displacement, like in every case, fluid is moving from one point to another point. So obviously, it takes some time, right? So a fluid particle is right over here. After two seconds, for example, coming right over here. So how much mass distance is traveling? So he's traveling from CG to CG, this much distance. Within how many times? Two seconds. But it might be millisecond. So you can figure out the rate, that means total displacement or distance traveled by the fluid element divided by the time. So you will get velocity, right? So that is called uh, velocity rate of translation. Similarly, uh, you can figure out at what velocity fluid element is rotating. So that is called angular velocity or rate of rotation bar in time. Then uh, write this one, your fluid particle at a time right over here. But after certain time, fluid particle came over here. So you see linear strain happening over here, but it takes some time. I will figure out the time. How much time take to move from point one to point two. So that is linear strain. So rate of linear strain, you can figure out. Similarly, a fluid element, you remain this point at time t. At time t plus delta t, that means within millisecond or one second, this fluid element is coming right over here and uh, his shape is changing. So in that case, I will figure out the 
you figure out that how much takes time to rotate this uh, non rotation angular deformation of the this fluid okay so it's called shear strain and this shear strain fluid limit was right over here when he came in over here then his shape changed by angular deformation so you divide by the time how much take time to travel from one point to another point divided by the amount of shear strain shear strain how will figure out the shear strain amount of angular deformation this was angle similarly angular deformation right over here from that deformation their angle divided by the time it will get rate of shear deformation in the fluid limit okay now the motion of a fluid element depends on how many uh, period so for example you are living in a room so fluid particle entering in your room right over here at time t but within second the fluid particle is traveling through other window and get up from the room so he traveling from one point to other point how much time he take he take delta t right and you see he and he is not traveling in the horizontal plane that mean his position along three axis might change so this v of velocity of the fluid particle is function of x y z and t that mean velocity is function of space and time similarly if you like to figure out the position of the fluid element you see its position is changing he coming over here after a few second right over here and finally get out from the room so every point if you like to say the location of the fluid element then you have to say x coordinate y coordinate z coordinate and also you have to say what is the time because his position is changing with respect to time so position also function of three vector x y z and t Okay. Now, how you can observe a motion of a fluid element? Uh, there is two method normally use. Number one is called Eulerian method. Right over here, Eulerian method, and other one is called Lagrangian method. so we need to know the what is the these two method and what is the difference between these two method say in the study of fluid flow it is necessary to observe the motion of fluid particle at various point in space and successive instant of time space mean function of x y and z coordinate and also successive instant of time for example if you are say there is a river there is a river flowing like that and in the river in the evening you are sitting in the river and something is coming from the from this side to say from this is just north heading from north to south out of flowing along this direction you are sitting over here right so you will see that there is a fluid element right over here how he is passing so he coming over here he coming over here he observing that fluid element that how this fluid element 
is passing through the river. So this is your one observation. You are, your position is fixed. From this position, you are looking the how fluid element is flowing throughout the river. This is one option. Other option that you remain right there and you are looking only the fluid element passing this line, that how they are passing suddenly in step. That means you are not looking the whole uh, path of the fluid element, just looking on from a certain location, that how fast or how slow the fluid element is passing through my position, okay? So there are two criteria, criteria the how you can observe the uh, motion of fluid particle. For example, uh, you are sitting right over here. This is the road, okay? There is a crowd demonstration in Bangladesh. And your friend, uh, he is in the crowd right over here. Okay, he's in the crowd. So from here, you can observe him. The demonstration going along this way. So how he move with the demonstration all the way to until he got from this position. So your eye only on him that how he's flowing with the stream of the demonstration. This is all, right? And other thing, you just sitting over here, then you are looking that every second, how many people passing through this line or through the piece or over this, you just counting that number. So this is one observation. And these two observation you see is not the same, is different. So <clears throat> similarly in the fluid element, if you observe the motion, then there is a two method. One is the Langrangian, other one is Eulerian. So what is the Eulerian method? It says the flow quantities such as velocity, density, temperature, pressure is a function of space and time at a particular point without referring to any individual identity of the fluid particle. So you are looking at a certain point that what is the velocity of the fluid? What is the pressure of the fluid? That means if there is a uh, river flow, so at a particular point, say so sitting right over here, and right over here you are measuring the fluid velocity, pressure, density, everything. So that is saying the space and time at a particular point without referring to any individual identity of the fluid particle. Wallerian method is most commonly adopted in fluid mechanics. And in this method, uh, you see velocity, and fluid velocity has three components, U, V, and W. W is the velocity component along Z axis and also all of the component of velocity, x, y, or z detection is function of time. Okay, other method, Rangan z method, it's saying flow quantity are described based on behavior of each individually identifiable fluid particle moving through the field of interest. That means, I give you example that your friend in the demonstration with the red shirt and you are keeping eye on him. That how he is flowing throughout the crowd during the demonstration. So that kind of observation is the Langland method. It's a flow quantity are described based on behavior of each individually identifiable fluid particle moving through the field of interest. That means moving through the flow. And how fluid velocity 
become function of its origin. I give you example that a fluid particle entering through you, your window, then it will travel around your corner due to the fan, then finally leap through the other window. So this is, that means the fluid particle traveling in all three axes, X, Y, and Z. Similarly, in a canal or river, a fluid particle right over here. So you think this is X axis, this is Y axis. So after certain time, this fluid particle, particle came in over here. That means he's changing his distance along X and Y axis with respect to time. And you will see he came in over here, then he's moving a little bit down. And in the river, you will see that some floating things is floating, he's passing, then due to the vortex, he is going down. So that means his dimension is changing along the depth, that means along the axis. So that's why you see all the uh, velocity component, the U, velocity U, V, W, all of them again function of X, Y, Z, and T. So right away, the difference between Ranganjan and Eulerian method. Ranganjan method is a moving reference frame. Your reference frame is moving because you keeping eye on your frame with the depth chart. And he's moving, right? You are looking to him. That how he is moving through the stream. So at one point, he is here. And you will see next few seconds, he's coming over here, then coming over here. And he's dancing in the crowd. And finally, he coming over here in the stream, in the road. So he's moving through a path. So <clears throat> you are observing him, or observing a fluid particle through the path of the fluid particle. That is called Ranganjian method. Focus on behavior of fluid particle as they move with the flow. That means you are looking throughout the path of the fluid flow. And all again, stationary reference frame. You are observing a crowd from your base that you're counting, then how many people passing, crossing this line in every second or every minute. That means your focus uh, on a group of fluid particles at a particular point, that how they are behaving. So it's saying stationary reference frame, focus on behavior of group of particles at a particular point. That means you are sitting at a space or point, from that point you are observing the motion. Now, what is this um, application? There is a two type of flow, laminar and turbulent. Then fluid motion, how we we'll figure out, how we we'll solve it. For example, you have a ball you're keeping over here and if you see, describe the fluid flow, this ball is keeping in the wind tunnel or keeping in the, then how will be fluid flow? Fluid is coming. Say, coming in this way. Then it's move over the ball, then going this way. Then coming again, it's some fluid go this way. And gradually it will stop right at a certain distance, then for a little pass straight. So this streamline, how can we visualize? Say <clears throat> you have a ball and you keep it with a stand. Say stand, the ball has a stand. 
and you have hand over here. You start, so the air will flow along this direction. If you are to keep some smoke generated right over here, then you will see how the smoke flowing over the ball. That means you can observe the flow. And this one, also you can simulate in some software, like ANSYS, and solid work might be covered, I'm not sure. Uh, these are the software. In the software, how they figure out? In the soft software, they'll show the line that this is the path of the fluid particle. Flow will be like that. But how they calculate? There is a two methods. Mathematically, either they solve this, use this one, or either this one. Okay. Uh, there is a in fluid mechanics, a lot of differential equation. By solving those differential equations, they figure out the flow pattern of the fluid and they give it a simulation on your computer screen. Okay, that's yes, the example. So one software might be used this method, other one might be using this method. Depends on uh, what type of flow and what type of software you are using. Okay, uh, there is one term we use in the fluid mechanics, it's called material derivative. What is the material derivative? So it's saying total derivative operator d by dt is a given special name. It's called, also it is called material derivative. So a lot of time we use uh, y equal to x square plus xy plus t cube because it is also function of time. How we can make the derivative? You can make dy by dx, right? You can figure out dy by dt. So right over here, this derivative dy by dt sometimes is called material derivative. Big D by dt express this way. Okay. Just remember, big D by dt is called material derivative. It is the same as small d by dt. Uh, right now here is the showing that say you have a function b velocity and this velocity b b equal to b of function of x y z and time t in that case, how you can figure out the dB? So dB, anyone, how you can figure out the dB? Uh, you can say dB divided by dT into dT plus uh, dv divided by dx into dx plus uh, dv divided by dy star dy. Then you will have uh, dv by dz star dz. That way you learn from the mathematics class. Okay, now, the both sides, if you divide by time dt, then what do you get? You get dv by dt equal to dv by dt, right? You get dv by dt plus, you get dv 
by dx into now you see dx by dt is giving you a velocity component along x axis that means u plus similarly you are getting dv by dy velocity component along y direction b then this one is getting you uh, double the velocity along z axis is double okay so finally you are getting this portion is getting acceleration this is your acceleration and this d you see in the left side is total derivative dv by dt we might say this one and this one same is not the same because all of them is del that means partial derivative and this term is the total derivative so if you have a uh, function that depends on x y z three or four variable then you can this way you can figure out the uh, total derivative of that function as you see velocity is the function of x y z and t how we can figure out the uh, acceleration so acceleration is equal to total derivative of velocity dv by dt and if, if, by using this way we can figure out the acceleration and after you solve you will get this one okay so this is coming from the mathematics so i just uh, try to refresh your mind okay and um, uh, sometimes you might use this one is del operator i think you already know from the mathematics so this is the vector of partial derivative so dy by dx the derivative along x axis along y axis along z axis and all the derivative has vector component and a fluid velocity of fluid particle it has along uh, three axis x y z so along y axis x axis y and z axis then how much of the dot product so value of dot product r v will be this one okay and similarly if you like to figure out what dt by dt it will be this one okay that means uh, you see the acceleration derivative of uh, velocity dv by dt uh, you can express in terms of this value dt by dt v into delta Okay, so far, uh, any question, anyone? Hello? Any questions? No questions? Okay. Uh, we need to know some definition. As I mentioned at the beginning of this class, that we are studying the new things. The motion of the fluid element or fluid particle and we are not talking about the static fluid we are talking about the fluid in motion for example you are if you like to observe fluid flow through a pipe like in your house fluid element passing through the pipe right also the gas is coming through the pipeline and also water flowing in a river. So all, all those situations are example of fluid in motion. So you need to know some definition. Number one thing is steady and unsteady flow. What is steady and what is unsteady flow? Then what is the uniform flow? What is the non-uniform flow? 
one dimensional, two dimensional, three dimensional flow. That you already made familiar. That means if flow only in one axis, that is called one dimensional. If flow have along two axis, then it's called two dimensional. Similarly, a velocity of a fluid particle has three components, or it has a displacement along three axes, then you can say flow is three dimensional flow. And most cases, uh, if its flow is saying two dimensional, that means you have only two velocity component, right? Along x axis u, small u, and y axis small v. And velocity w along z axis will be zero in two dimensional case. In three dimensional, we have all the three component. And one dimensional, you have only one component, either U or might be V or might be W. Then you have rotational flow, E rotational flow. Then laminar flow and turbulent flow. So we will discuss later on that what is the laminar flow and what is the turbulent flow. Now we see steady flow. Uh, fluid flow is said to be is steady. And steady if at any point in the fluid, uh, various characteristics such as velocity, pressure, density, temperature, we describe the behavior of the fluid in motion, do not sense with time. That means in a river, the fluid particle is passing certain velocity at this point. Say, uh, if coming in the morning in the river bank, and you counting that what is the velocity of this fluid particle moving this line, moving this line. You came in morning, then came in afternoon, then you came in the evening, and you see you have the same velocity. That means velocity is not changing with respect to time. That is called steady flow. If it sends respect to time, that is called unsteady flow, okay? So unsteady flow, fluid flow said to be unsteady if any point in the flowing fluid, one or all the characteristics are described, the behavior of the fluid motion sends with time. So I give you only example of velocity. Fluid particle might have density, might have pressure, so all those velocity, pressure, density, temperature, everything is not changing respect to time, then it is called steady flow. If it is changing respect to time, then it is called unsteady flow, okay? Now we'll say what is the uniform flow and what is the non-uniform flow. Uniform flow, when velocity of flow of fluid does not sense in both magnitude and direction from one point to from point to point in the flowing field for any given instant of time the flow is said to be uniform flow if you look this figure on the right hand side if I think about some fluid element, say all the some fluid element right over here, I pick up some fluid element. At the time, they are at the right over here. So this fluid element, after certain time, say two seconds, with the two seconds, this fluid will travel only this mass, this one only this mass. The next one travel a little bit faster. And in the middle, all of them is travel 
same distance. That what does it mean? That means this flow is uniform flow. Almost all the, except the wall, because the wall have less velocity due to the viscosity and the friction. That's why he traveled less around the wall. But at the middle, all the fluid element, almost their velocity is same. So this type of flow is called uniform flow. And non-uniform flow. If you look over here in the left side figure, you see the fluid particle right over here is not traveling that much. But fluid particle right over here, he traveling from here to this much distance. And fluid particle right over here, he travel from here to here. And at the middle, he travel more distance. So that in each point their velocity is not the same. So that's why this type of flow is called non-uniform flow. If the velocity of flow fluid from changes from point to point, then it's say velocity of flow field changes from point to point in the fluid at any given instant of time then the flow is said to be non-uniform flow, okay. All this type of flow, and you see right over here, there is a uh, three type of flow, four type, right? Steady, unsteady. Then uniform, non-uniform. Then there might be mixed type of flow. When it's saying steady uniform flow, there might be steady non-uniform flow. Then steady uniform flow. So what is the example? Say you have a constant flow, rate flow in a constant diameter pipe. If you have a pipe as a fixed diameter, that means that will be steady uniform flow. Because if diameter is same, so all the fluid particle will travel with same velocity. So that is called, and velocity would not be sense respect to time. So fluid particle right over here, he travel this mass, full particle right over here, he will travel say, by same distance. If it is, diameter is not same. So that is example of steady uniform flow. Now, if you say add a, your uh, pipe, one second. This is your, Pipe, but you are using a valve to control the flow right over the through this valve. Okay. You see, when you uh, take a shower, you open the tap, your pipe has fixed diameter, right? You are rotating a little bit, opening the tap. Then what will happen? Water will fall down through the tap but all the water will have same velocity, but their magnitude will not vary depending on time. Because you just open a little bit, then you stop. Okay. Again, after sorry, you open more and stop, and fluid will pass through the tap with higher velocity, right? But, Say to opening the, your tap, it takes 10 seconds, for example, by your hand, from close to full open, right? So what happening? All of them have the find out is close, no velocity, velocity zero. Then gradually you turn off so with 10, 10 seconds. So when it's 10 seconds, 
all the fluid will coming out through the tap with higher velocity. Finally, six seconds, velocity will be less, right? That means at zero time, velocity is zero, time increasing, your velocity increasing because you're opening more. Gradually, when you are getting at the full point, that means opening full within 10 seconds, then velocity will be maximum. But each time, fluid particle will flow with the same velocity. So that is an example of unsteady uniform flow. It's a either decreasing or increasing flow rate in a constant diameter phi is the example of unsteady uniform flow. Uh, similarly, when you closing, your bulb remain full open. Then when you are rotating the knob, then you open the closing, right? The fluid velocity will be gradually decrease. So you cannot stop immediately. It might take some second, right? 20 seconds or 15 seconds. So within 20, 15 seconds, your fluid velocity is changing respect to time, but at certain instant, say at six seconds, you stop. Then what will happen? Through the six seconds, all the fluid particles would travel at the same velocity. So that is example of steady, unsteady uniform flow. Now, instead of <coughs> constant diameter pipe, if you have taper pipe, for example, right over here, little bit wider cross section, but right over here, cross section is narrow. Then what will happen? Your fruit particle at the middle will travel faster, but at the side wall will travel with less velocity. That means velocity is not same due to the change in diameter of the pipe. So in that case, either you have you are decreasing or increasing the flow, you will see, see when you just open a little bit, your velocity profile. Of the, will be like that. That means at the middle one will travel with the higher velocity and gradually at the wall, velocity will be decreased because it is deeper. But if it is uh, constant diameter, then all the fluid particles will travel with the same velocity. So in that case, your velocity profile will be just like that. Let me see if I draw an arrow. Velocity profile will be like this. Okay. So if a flow increasing or decreasing in a taper pipe, that is the example of unsteady non uniform flow. Okay. <clears throat> Any question so far? No question? Okay. So from here, <clears throat> from the beginning, uh, what type of question might be in the exam? that what is uh, fluid kinematics? What is the difference between fluid kinetics and kinematics? Then uh, describe the uh, rotation, translation, and angular deformation of the fluid element. Then I might say, what is the total derivative of the fluid particle? Then what is the difference between Eulerian and Langlagen method? Uh, define Langlandian method, how it is varies from all other methods. That might be the question from this chapter. Then, definition what is the steady flow, unsteady flow, what is the rotational and iterational flow, laminar and turbulent flow. Then, uniform non uniform flow. So, from you need to know the definition of the is. Okay. Uh, right over here, just giving a example that velocity always function of x, y, z, and t. And if it is two-dimensional, 
then you have only three variables because it has a time. And if it's steady, steady means does not depend on time. In value is not changing with time. Then the velocity will be function of only x, y, and z. Because magnitude of the velocity is not changing with respect to time. Similarly, in three-dimensional flow, velocity will be for unsteady case, x, y, z, and t. But it becomes steady. That means uh, velocity does not change with respect to time, even constant. So in that case, your velocity will be function of x, y, and z. Okay. Similarly, for one-dimensional flow, this one for one-dimensional steady flow. Uh, right over here, just giving an example of flow, of rotational flow and irrotational flow. So right over here, you see this one, irrotational flow or translation, because fluid element, what is the path of the fluid element? It travel along this line, right? Or it might be travel, again, we'll come back to over here. But each point, you see the shape of the fluid element, remains the same position. That means its shape remains the vertical, right? And it is not sending. It is not making any rotation. Overall path is making rotation, but it is not rotating respect to his own center of gravity. So this type of flow is called a rotational flow or translation. If say a flow is said to be a rotational or translation, if fluid particles are not rotated above their mass center for moving in the direction of flow. Okay. Then rotational flow. You look right over here, a fluid particle was right over at a time. It came in over here, over here, over here, over here. If you look carefully, you see, in every case, he rotated. Right over here, he rotated along this direction, little bit, right? Then came in over here, still he has rotation. He came in over here, again, he make rotation in opposite direction, become straight. So, E rotational flow is said to be e rotational if e rotational or translational if full particles are not rotated about their mass center while moving in the direction of flow. The example is this one. And rotational flow, a flow is said to be rotational if fluid particles are rotated about their mass center while moving in the direction of flow, like this one. It's called irrotational flow. Okay, now, uh, we need to see what is the laminar flow and what is the turbulent flow. A flow said to be laminar when fluid particle are moved in a layer, laminate. Laminar means laminate, one layer by other layer. With one layer of fluid sliding smoothly over adjacent layer, and there is no moment transfer in between the layer. Viscosity of the fluid play important role in development of laminar flow. You can easily observe the laminar flow and turbulent flow. Say you have two bottles. One is empty, other one is full of water. And you uh, transferring the water from one bottle to another bottle. And if you put slowly and you see uh, one type of flow, if you look the flow at the close to the mouth of the bottle, you see the observe the third flow. Another thing, you are changing or uh, getting some honey from a bigger bottle. 
then you look to the flow. And that two flow is not the same. In case of honey, you will see, or say master oil, you see, or cooking oil, you see the flow is coming down very slowly, seems like they are in a straight line. They, that type of flow is an uh, example of laminar flow. But in food water, you will not see that kind of uh, line when you get water from a bigger bottle by pouring. So laminar flow, this is the example of laminar flow. So in laminar flow, what is the example that fluid particle is flow in a layer through this layer. This layer will travel a little bit low velocity because he is close to the wall due to the friction. Uh, if I I'm just showing the, the layer coming over here. Okay. But the immediately top layer of the fluid, he'll travel a little bit faster because he'll try to hold him down the bottom layer. Okay, travel a little bit faster. Then say at the middle, traveling with the same velocity, this one with the almost same velocity. And gradually moving to the wall, velocity is decreased, right over this mass. But you see the fluid particles, they are traveling with the same velocity and they're not mixing each other. This type of flow is called laminar flow and it easily observable. You are, uh, if you look to a flow in the river, sometimes you see a lot of things floating in the river and going with the water, right? In the north to south. In our, all the river flow from north to south, right? So you see that a floating element in the river is right over here. And you see, observe 10 minutes, the how is flowing. You see he's flowing with a straight line. He's not changing the direction. That type of flow is called laminar flow. And right over here, he's changing, he's not changing that direction. So this type of flow is called laminar flow. But if this flow is changed, say this will put it right over here, in the next moment, it is coming right over here. And this one, next one coming over here. What does it mean? That means every time, is changing the direction. So if a fluid particle, say right over here, say all the fluid particles right over here, it's same line, the entering in the pipe, then this fluid particle is supposed to go straight, but he is coming over here. And he, this one, say coming straight, right over hitting this one. So after hitting, he is changing direction. He might flow right over here, then he might flow coming right over here along this direction. So, in case of turbulent flow, fluid particle not traveling in a laminar, and every time they are mixing together and flow in a haphazard way. Why it happened? There is a continuous collusion between the fluid particle. So, if there is a collusion, that means when it is flowing, then on the way, it is hitting other fluid element. So if it's hitting other fluid element, what will happen? It is momentum in sense, MD, Barbe is sense. So that means uh, you might solve this kind of problem that you have a one body, other body hitting this body with a certain angle, then this uh, body is traveled together a certain distance or they might be uh, traveling in different direction after hitting this on this direction and other body might be traveled along this direction, okay? So your momentum that uh, you use this kind of equation that uh, M1 V1, right? Or you say M into V, last velocity, momentum into M1 
plus m1 v1 plus m2 star v2 right this type of problem you solve that means your momentum is changed initially they coming both this velocity but finally they are getting out this equal to m in it say m1 plus m2 into v then you can figure out the final velocity of the uh, object after impact so this way in laminar flow there is a continuous transfer of momentum so it's saying that a fluid in motion is said to be turbulent when fluid particle moves in entirely in a haphazard or disorderly manner that result in a rapid continuous mixing of the fluid leading to momentum transfer as flow occurs so there is continuously transfer of momentum in a turbulent flow but at laminar flow there is no turbulent how we can observe uh, just example i give you that if you uh, observe the flow from a smoke flow from a coil or from a cigarette you will see the first portion so this is the coil and you will see the smoke is coming out all of them passing seems like in a line then suddenly they got haphazard mixing together so this portion of flow is laminar then it become this portion is turbulent now now flow visualizes how we can uh, observe the flow around the object for example he design a submarine and a submarine if you look from the side look like a pipe like round pipe so for example like this type but it have a some pin at the top for communication purpose now how flow will travel uh, over this the body of the submarine how we can figure out how we can observe you can you cannot like design the submarine you put in the water and you blow no this is a big size you cannot do that right but there is a uh, scope of opportunity that you make the submarine with a smaller size thousand times less or hundred times less but shape remain the same is called model uh, by sheet material by wood or you can buy make a foam then that one you put in the wind tunnel you put in the wind tunnel then air will flow and if you generate some smoke then you can see that how fluid flowing around the pin or around the body of the submarine this is called flow visualization similarly you design a sports car it, it will drive say 150 uh, miles per hour then you need to figure out that how will flow will travel over the body of the car you see all the older car they have kind of box shapes but if you look the new car their shape is more aerodynamic that means they figure out that if you make the aerodynamic shape then the air will easily flow over the car that means it will get it will get less resistance of the air but you design a car now how we will observe the flow that we need to figure out the how a yard will flow over the car or under the car or you might uh, say design a helicopter or design a airplane so how we will look at flow in that case we have to make a uh, model of the object then you can put that object in the wind tunnel you flow the yard and before 
at the front section, you put some chemical to make the smoke. Then you can observe the flow. Say right over here, this showing a flow over a ball. This is one option. Other option that if you use some software, it's called CFD. What is CFD? Computerized Fluid Dynamic Software. Okay. Using this software, you can look the flow pattern and how flow will be over the object. So it's saying flow visualization is the visual examination you will see on your eye of flow field feature. It is important for both physical experiment and numerical solution. Numerical solution means by using some uh, CFD tool like ANSYS, Abacus, Nestor, Bertrand. Okay. While quantitative study of fluid dynamics, it require advanced mathematics. So what ANSYS does inside the ANSYS? You make a model of the ball in the ANSYS, then you give the direction to the ANSYS that the yeah, air is coming with 20 miles per hour. So show me the contour, the how will be your flow over towards, what will do? You, you need to put some, in the answer, they, they have some data that they know, what is the velocity of the density of the water or air. And you will put the, what is the temperature? He'll figure out the radius of the, this ball, the size of the ball. Then you are giving velocity. So in terms of velocity, you figure out flow will be laminar or turbulent. He'll calculate inside. Then there is a, some mathematics, a uh, differential equation he will solve behind. Okay, you will not see in the screen. After solving all the differential equation, he will give a result. And he will give a uh, visual uh, demonstration of the flow flowing over the ball. So actually, there is a advanced mathematics is going on inside the software. There are many types of flow pattern that can be visualized. Many types of flow pattern, both physically and experimentally, and also computational. Computationally mean you can observe in a software. The flow pattern may describe by means of stream line, stream tube, path line, stick line. So these flow pattern, how we can describe there is a uh, some definition number one thing is for those lines right over here is called streamline and you see right over here that motion of fluid element along this streamline is passing in the straight line almost right but this one is not along straight line it is a little bit different Right, that means this guy, uh, this fluid element, it was also about this place, right? He moving along this line, this one also coming following his path. What I'm saying along this line, every line you see, all the fluid element is going through a fixed point, it's passing through a uh, fixed point of a previous uh, flowing fluid particle. So all these fluid flow pattern, if you like to describe mathematically, or if you like to understand, then you need to know certain definition. Number one thing, steam line. Then you need to know what is the steam steel, what is the path line, and what is the street line. Okay, that is it. Um, any, any question? Anyone? No? Hello? No question? Okay, uh, 
So, what is the streamline? The saying streamline is an imaginary curve or line through a flowing fluid in such a way that tangent to it at any point give the direction of velocity of the flow in that point. For example, you have a pipeline, but it is bent, come like that. So your fluid particle is flowing along this direction, right? It's coming along this direction, this direction, and you can identify them with some arrow. So what will the direction of velocity of fluid element at this point or at this point, how you can figure out. You need to draw a tangent line. If you'd like to figure out the velocity of the fluid element, right this way, this point, if you make a tangent line from this point, it will get direction of the velocity. If you like to figure out the direction of velocity right here, then you need to draw a tangent line. From the tangent line, you get the direction of velocity. Similarly, right over here is showing. You like to get uh, velocity right over here, then you need to draw a tangent. You want right over here, you need to draw a tangent. So it is an imaginary line that represent its tangent at any point and represent the direction of velocity. So pattern of flow field can be represented by series of streamlines, such that velocity vector at any point is giving tangent to the curve. So for example, a fluid element right over here, then is flowing along the streamline. And the streamline flowing along this direction. So we like to figure out that what is the relationship between a streamline and its velocity vector. So this fluid element traveling along the streamline and it has its velocity is vector. So it has a three component. U, V, and W. This is the uh, vector. This is, U is the velocity along X axis, Y axis, and Z axis is W. Now, at a certain time, he was right over here, then came right over here. At this point, I like to figure out the velocity component. So you see, if you make a tangent, make a tangent, then this would be dx. This was distance, it travel at time instance, from here to here, he came from here, and along y direction, he traveled this mass, right? x direction, dx this mass, y direction this mass. But this point, if this distance is dr from here to here, distance traveled by the fluid element is dr. <clears throat> so this dr will be a vector of dx, dy, dz. Okay? And the velocity component, right over there, is velocity is v. So v has three components, right? y-axis v, along x-axis u, and z-axis w. So it is vector, velocity vector is this one. In that case, you see this smaller angle, this triangle, uh, this triangle, and this bigger triangle with the velocity is similar. From this triangular relationship, you can get this, this equation. 
Thus, remember, dx by u equal to dy by v equal to dz by w. And vector dr by vector v is same as this, all those components. Okay? Why? Because if dx proportional to u, because is dx is more, what does it mean? That means velocity component along with x axis is high. If d value of dy is more, what does it mean? Velocity along y axis is high. But they are, if it's traveling in a streamline, then we have ratio dz by w dy by v dx by u will be equal to the dr by v. Okay. This is the definition of streamline. <clears throat> Other thing, uh, stream tube. The streamline, then we have stream tube. What is the stream tube? And uh, the mass of a stream tube is a imaginary tube to be formed by a group of streamline passing through a small close car, which may vary or may not be circular. There is no flow across the boundary surface of the stream tube, and velocity of the fluid has no component normal to the streamline. So what is the streamline? We are considering a group of streamline inside a tube and it is a imaginary tube. And what is the condition? Condition is that the fluid element will always pass through the streamline, along the streamline, and there will be no flow along perpendicular to the streamline. That means um, fluid element should not flow along this direction because as per definition, this is an imaginary tube. We're always flowing along the streamline. And streamline may not be circular. So like this one, on the right side, it says, if there is no flow across the bounding surface of the steam tube, velocity of the fluid has no component normal to the streamline. That means and along the particular direction, there will be no component of the velocity. What does it mean? It means that if you think along this axis is x and y axis is along this direction, that means the v will be always zero, no component of velocity along y axis. But what will be velocity along x axis only? So what does it mean? That means it make a simplification in the calculation, in the software. Say, I like to figure out a flow pattern in an elbow. Elbow mean this type of. So if fluid coming this and this way, it's getting out. How I can show or figure out the equation of the line from the flow pattern. If I think that fluid will flow along a stream tip, then I can describe this way, that fluid particle will flow along a streamline and in a stream tube. So although area over here is smaller, over here higher, but those streamlines are not intersecting and fluid element is passing through the, uh, along the streamline. And this one, you can give direction in the software and he will show you the uh, streamline or flow pattern. So in that case, for example, you have a, this kind of flow right over here, like this one. 
So you see flow will be flow like that. So I like so space between the seam line right over here is high because it is expanding. But still, uh, software will calculate that there is no velocity along perpendicular to the steam line. That means fluid particle will not travel, say, one particle over here. In the next time, he will not go along other direction because void component is zero. His velocity will be always along the steam line. So this is steam tube is an imaginary tube. And we think that it's formed by a group of steam line where will be no velocity of the fluid particle along a direction perpendicular to the steam line. Okay. And why we assume just for simplification. Okay. Uh, right now, it's saying mass flow rate passing through any cross section or slice of a given steam tube must remain shape. Shape of the steam tube changes from one instant to another because change in position of steam line, like flow through pipe, nozzle, diffuser. And two steam lines can never intersect with each other as the instantaneous velocity vector at any given point is unique. That means your velocity vector uh, along the steam line, always there is no velocity component along y-axis. That means velocity component along perpendicular to the steam line is zero. So that's why your fluid particle always flow through the steam line. And that's why you see right over here, the space between the steam line is less. That means they're shrinking. And right over here, space between the steam line is increasing. That means fluid is expanding, but still they are passing through a line. Now, how is they know this is the real problem or not? It depends on type of fluid, but at least uh, you will get 90% or 95% close to the real situation in the computer software. And it's saying the flow through the steam line, amount of flow, say right over here, flow is two liter per second. Right over here will be same amount, two liter per second, right? Because whatever, but right over here, velocity will be slow, over here, velocity will be high. But both cases, there will be no velocity along perpendicular direction to the flow. So our time is uh, over, I think, right? Uh, so far, any question? Anyone?